Okay, so we're going to be creating a simple Angular JS application today, and we're going to be looking at routing and how you can control moving between multiple pages within your application. So this is the simple application that we're going to be building. Uh, right now I have all the HTML on one page. There's uh, six items in a list, and then I've got uh, an area where I could display details about one of these items. What we're going to do is we're going to break this up into two pages. So the details is going to go to one page. These items will be on the main page. When you click on the View Details button, we'll go to look at the details for this actual item. OK, so let's look at the HTML that we have. The starter files you can get from the Canvas module page. So here we have our main HTML tag in which we've named our application Booyah. It can be called anything you want. We can take this ng app attribute and place it here in the HTML, or we could leave it in the body. Either one's going to work for what we're doing. In the head, two CSS files. One of them is the bootstrap file, which saves us a whole bunch of time building our UI. Uh, another one is our custom app CS. All I've put inside there is just some styles on the h1 tag to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, then at the bottom of our HTML file, we have three JavaScript files. One of them is the base Angular JS. Another one is the Angular route JS file. And finally, our very own app JS. So let's take a look at that. That's where we'll be doing most of our work. Angular.module and then the name. This is going to refer to the app that contains our whole page. We are going to use routing today, so we're going to have to include that as a dependency. There we are. So now I'm sure you've seen uh, var app equals this and then people using app in front of these things, but you really don't need to. It's much more efficient if we just, it's a best practice if you just do this. Uh, Angular module. Uh, a little bit later on, we're going to be splitting up all these parts into different pages, and we're not going to be declaring var app over and over and over again at the same level. We're going to be just doing this and then connecting controllers and factories and services and other things to the main reference to the module. Inside config, this is where we're actually going to do the routing itself. So this is going to be a function inside of here. And the one thing that we need from ng-route to do the routing is a element called route provider. The controller, this is where we can attach parts of our web page to the JavaScript. This controller will control part of our page, and we'll have another controller to control the other page. So we're going to have one for the main section and one for that details section. Let's start off with just one for the main. So I'll save this, come back into the HTML, and in the body right here, there's my main element. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the attribute ng-controller to this, and I'm going to call this main CTRL. That's a naming convention that you'll find most places. Main control. So I'll save that, come back into app.js, and this is the name of our controller. So that's the connection between the HTML and the JavaScript, this main CTRL name, and then it's going to have a function as well. This is where we put all the business logic for that part of our web page. Okay, um, we're going to find a little bit later that we're going to be referring to uh, route params as something that's going to have uh, value for us, and then scope is another one. Scope is where we'll store all of our data for this part of the page. Okay, so name of our app, dependency for the app, we need to have the JavaScript file connected for this, which we already saw that we did. Config, this is where the routing happens. So routing happens here, and business logic goes here. Okay, and that's the basic structure for our whole application. We can take a look now inside here, refresh it, nothing's changed, all this still works. All right, so let's take a look at scope and what that does for us. In here, the details. 
if I wanted to reference something from scope, I can just put the name here. So I'm going to create something called my var inside of scope. Now, right now, this is going to fail. This is what I'm getting here. This is not working for us. But if I come back into app.js, which I'll take this out. I don't need this just quite yet. Come inside here, and if we reference scope, and we create something called my var, let's call it cheese. Now there's something inside of scope called my var, and it has the value of the string cheese. Inside here, we're talking about main controller. All the stuff inside here is controlled by main controller. And now my var is going to be able to show us the value inside that. And there's details for cheese. All right, so now we're going to actually do some routing. What we're going to do first is we're going to break up the HTML into the two different pages. So I'm going to take everything here inside this top row. I'm going to remove that. And we're going to put that into its own file called details.html. And I'm also going to add another main element just to have it the same as the other page. I'm going to put a, a main element around it. And then the other content, so the remaining stuff, the main with the ng controller, all the way down to the end of main. I'm going to cut that out, and we're going to put that inside of main.html. Now, I've got these both saved in a folder called templates. You can keep it right at the root, but it's better to organize your file, better to organize your content into folders so you know where to find things. OK, now I'm also going to do this. I'm going to remove this ng controller attribute because I'm going to start to control it from the JavaScript file. There we go. That's saved. And I've saved the removal of all this. And the only thing that we need to add inside here is an element called ng-view. This is going to be where the application is going to place those two different templates. OK, jumping back into here, back into our config where the routing happens. We're going to use that route provider thing that we added in here. And inside of route provider, we're going to create a bunch of conditions. It's going to look kind of like this. There we go. That's all of our routing. So for every one of these different pages that we're going to load into the shell, there's going to be a when method. At the very bottom, we've got an otherwise condition. Inside the otherwise condition, we're going to say, OK, well, if we don't have something that matches, if we haven't already defined something, what do we want to do? I'm going to say that I'm going to redirect to, and then I put in the path that I want to use, like that. So I'm going to redirect to this. This is actually going to be my very first condition. So I'm going to say this is going to be the main page. And then if my path says details like that, I'm going to redirect someplace else. Now let's open up this object to give me some space to write. Open up this object. Inside here, there's going to be a couple parameters, same parameters inside here. First one is going to be the template URL. So where do we want to go? What, do, what is it that we want to load when that is our URL? We're going to start with going to the templates folder. And then we're going to load main.html inside of our details. It'll be details.html. So if this is the path, this is what we load. If this is the path, this is what we load. OK, and controllers. What do we want to use as the controller for this template? 
need a comma at the end of each of these because we're adding a new parameter inside the object. So the controller for the first one, well, we'll use the one that we've already created, main CTRL. And for this one, we'll create one called details, CTRL. Okay. Now we haven't created this one yet, but we do have this one. There it is. So why not just save ourselves a little bit of time, copy, paste, rename this as details CTRL. There we go. Now I'm not going to use this myvar anymore, but there we have it. That's routing. You create conditions for each of your pages. This is where you want to send people. And if this is your URL, this is the template you load. This is the controller that you use to control what goes on on that page. And for details, this one. Back in our HTML, we're down to just this. Inside main, here we have it. And you can see the href for all these buttons. I'm going to details. But then I also have this number that I'm passing along. Now this is the route params par portion of routing. These numbers are actually going to be used on that other page inside of details. Inside here, instead of my var, I want to be able to use, let's say, the item ID. Let's say that's what I want to be able to put inside here. So if I click on the first one, it'll say details for number one. If I click on the second one, details for number two. So this number right here, we want to pass that along. So item ID, back inside here, right in here. I want to have something in here called scope.itemID. Now let's just uh, set it equal to the number 42 just so we have something, and take a look at our page. Oh, and this has been jumping around to, through our templates as we've been working. Okay, here we are. Back to our basic application. There's our six items on the main page. You can see our URL is the slash, that's the main. Click on this. Oh, it's not uh, jumping over there for us just yet. If you can see down at the bottom of the page as I'm mousing over, it shows the different URLs and it's detail slash one, detail slash two, number four, number six, number five. Now the reason it's not going there, we have a problem in our routing. Back here, we said details. Well, that wasn't exactly our URL. Our details were more like this. This was what the URL was showing, details plus a slash and the number. If I save that, and I come in here, and I say, instead of, well, I'll leave it to this, we'll test that. So I'm on this page, I click on details. There we go, number six, that was the routing that we had. When we got number six, it came to the second page, and there's the 42 that we were setting in the script right here. Now, I don't want to have to build one of these routes for each of the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, what if I had a thousand items? It's going to be way too much. I want to be able to capture whatever number is being passed into that. So we're going to create a variable. By putting a colon in front of this, I can come up with any variable name I want. I can say Bob. Now, this number, whatever it is, is going to be captured and passed along to the controller for that page, this one right here, this controller, inside of another dependency injection called route params. Route params will contain this variable. So instead of scope ID being equal to 42, I'll be able to capture the number from the URL. This has become generic, so it works for any number. 
and down here this is going to work through route params to get route params dot bob okay save that come back here let's go back to the main refresh make sure we've got everything new now this is number one this is number three if I click on three hey look there's the number three there's the number three back to the main page number two number six number five there we are so there's controllers working for both pages the route provider allows us to put in variables here so if I make this part of my path this is going to be capturing the value putting it into that variable now typically you'd use something that was a little bit more useful like item ID and then down here I would use item ID again I'll save that as long as this matches this we're fine you want to use something logical but you get the point so we've got our route set up our otherwise which is our default route which is going to send it back to here and then our controllers for each one of our templates and that's our basic routing application